Just imagine facing the world like this. A massive growth has left this three-year-old disfigured. A deformity so shocking, people cruelly called him the elephant boy. People would stop and stare, and quite a few kids that would start crying and run away from him. From the day Maddox Flynn was born, it was obvious to his mom, Nicole, that something was terribly wrong. I was terrified. I, I didn't know what it was. The small tumor began growing at an alarming rate. It blinded his left eye and distorted his mouth, making speech almost impossible. Doctors didn't know how to treat it. I was very determined I was going to find a doctor because um, throughout the whole world, there has to be somebody. Help would come thousands of miles away. I can help this child. Looking at a photo, renowned New York vascular surgeon Dr. Milton Weiner diagnosed Maddox with a lymphatic malformation. By the time he's four or five, it could potentially be double the size. My immediate reaction upon seeing photos was that I can do something. This was certainly a condition that we see quite often, and uh, this is something that I can do. I can help this child. We know for certain that it's not a hemangioma. It's known as a lymphatic malformation. These never go away. As the child gets older, the lesion, the malformation gets bigger and bigger and becomes more and more disfiguring. It would get much bigger than this. It could get two, three times the size of this. And not only that, it's already caused impairment. It's already potentially caused blindness in that eye. He has other problems. He's unable to uh, articulate because his lip is pulled down. His movement of his upper lip is restricted. Uh, so apart from disfigurement, there is also physical disability which will get worse. Maddox was flown from his hometown in Edmonton, Canada to New York City's Roosevelt St. Luke's Hospital. Mike Flynn carried his son to the operating room. Removing the massive growth is extremely complicated and took 12 hours of surgery. I had to reposition his nose and his lip and the corner of his mouth. The difficulty with removing it is making sure that one gets as much of it as possible and leaving as much normal tissue behind so that one can reconstruct. Maddox emerges from the OR and his parents race to his bedside. The sight of their little boy's face, tears and all, has them overcome with emotion. This is a dream come true. It's done. Know? I started crying and I just held him and I told him how much I was proud of him and that he looks beautiful. Just three months later and still healing, take a look at Maddox. But there are more surgeries to come. Today, he's undergoing a critical procedure to save his eye by removing scar tissue. Are you ready? We're going to fix your eye up? Good. Now watch this. Brave Maddox knows just what to do, bracing himself for the operation. His transformation is astounding. The little boy who once scared people away is now proudly showing his new face to the world. Are my eyes glazed? This woman may look and sound drunk, but she's not. She's actually suffering a massive stroke. And amazingly, it was this cell phone video that helped save her life. Was the right side of your face numb this morning? No. The video was shot by her fiance, Dave O'Neill. At 8 a.m., Diane McPeters awoke feeling tired and sluggish. Her droopy face and slurred speech told her fiance right away that something was wrong. But Diane refused to go to the hospital. And so I really, because I wasn't hurting her or anything, like I said, so I didn't really think about being a stroke. Never even crossed my mind. She was very slow to respond to what I was telling her. Uh, she would not, uh, she had a droopy face. Uh, she was talking in a very, very low, uh, low tone, which is something she doesn't do. Uh, very often, uh, unless there's something wrong. And so I was trying to get her to, uh, let's go to the hospital and get this taken care of. I was definitely worried. Then at 3 p.m., they went out to the porch. The stroke was rapidly worsening. I was sitting here, she was sitting there. Dave took out his iPhone and began recording. I would like for you to speak into the, into the camera here. To me, it looks like you're talking out of the left side of your mouth. Incredibly, Diane is smoking a cigarette, still refusing to go to the hospital. 
I could not believe what I was seeing. I threatened you to call 911, is that correct? And why should I not do that? Because, just, just, just give it tonight. I was thinking what I wanted to say, but I couldn't say it. Dave had enough and called 911. I was definitely scared for her life. Diane was raced to the medical center of Plano, outside Dallas. The prognosis was grim. She had a devastating brain attack. Diane was wheeled into surgery where Dr. Valib Janardin and his surgical team were waiting. You have a huge area that's not getting blood flow. When dealing with a stroke, time is crucial. In most cases, doctors can only guess when a stroke occurred, but Dave had the exact timeline on his cell phone. It was absolutely critical for me to know when the symptoms started. Dr. Janardin showed Diane how he snaked a micro-thin catheter through her body up to her brain to remove the clot and put her on the road to what he expects will be a full recovery. Diane has two special people to thank for her survival, her doctor and her fiance. I owe him my life. This newborn baby is being fitted with special body armor, a shield to protect her tiny heart. Audrina was actually born with her heart beating outside her body. How does this happen? Like, what do you mean her heart's on the outside of her body? Ashley Cardenas was 16 weeks pregnant when an ultrasound revealed her baby would be born with her heart exposed. So Dr. Charles Frazier and his surgical team were ready when she was born. The operation was very delicate. Basically, it meant implanting Audrina's heart back into her body and covering it with a thin layer of skin. Surgery went really well. The baby was very stable throughout. Babies that survive this rare surgery often die within three days. But Audrina defied the odds. In the ICU, she opened her eyes and looked adoringly at her mom. She is a miracle. She is. She's proved everybody wrong. Two months later, Audrina was fitted that special shield, and she was discharged from Texas Children's Hospital in Houston. How do you feel? Very excited, very blessed, very thankful. So how is baby Audrina doing today? Here she is, a bright-eyed, beaming six-month-old bundle of joy. Hi, how are come you? in, good. Ashley and her baby are living for now in a small Houston hotel room to be near Texas Children's Hospital. Her mom showed me how Audrina's heart looks now. That is actually her heart um, beating right underneath the skin. Doctors will eventually use Audrina's own ribs to build a chest wall. She's, She's trying, trying to, to sit, sit up. up. Yeah. Mom says daily life for her little girl who was born with her heart outside her body requires extra care. Hey. Audrina is fed through a feeding tube. Ashley has been trained to use a stethoscope. You're literally yes. Dr. Mom. Yes. Getting ready for a stroll in the park takes extra precautions. Mom puts her protective shield in place. This is a, this protects her. Ashley prepares a portable oxygen tank. Ready to go. She loves to be out and about. The baby smiles at the sun, warming her little face. You like the wind? A baby girl who came through so much is showing a fighting spirit beating in her little heart. I know whatever she puts her mind to, she'll be able to do. She's a strong fighter. Now look at her. At 18 months old, Audrey is a typical rambunctious toddler. Yay! Exploring the world around her, or at least as far as the breathing tube she needs for oxygen, will allow her to run. Port is about 50 feet. Come on! Audrey has outgrown her first heart shield. Look how little you were. And now is being fitted with a bigger one. Yay! Audrey faces more medical challenges, but everywhere she goes, Audrey's spirit touches hearts. Yay! She's a terrific child. Um, developmentally um, just right on par. Doctors are now working with engineers to develop a permanent internal chest plate. We're going to go ahead and, and join the bone up on either side here and remove all the old scar tissue and cover the heart with something permanent. A brave little girl who came through so much is showing a true fighting spirit beating in her little heart. To be able to see her run and you know walk and talk, I'm very proud and I'm very blessed.